Ready to go. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Today, we're going to get a look at using electrolysis to remove rust from parts. I've had my little setup for about six months now, and it comes in really handy. I've used it quite a few times, and it works like a charm. It feels like you're doing magic when you use it. So let's get to it. All you new people out there, go ahead and subscribe. It's free, and it really is what we work for. So let's get started. This is the basic parts you're going to need. You need a non-conductive bucket, and you're going to need some rebar to use as anodes. Now, rebar works great because it's high carbon steel, and that's ideal for this situation. Now, keep in mind that as you use it, it's going to take the rust from the part and move it to the anode. The part would be the cathode in this system. And as the rust moves from the cathode to the anode, it's going to wear the anode down. It's going to, it's going to sacrifice itself for the system. And rebar is nice and cheap. Now, you can use titanium if you want to build a system that costs a whole lot more than this one. It really won't work better, but it will cost you a lot more. So you can see our anodes are daisy chained together with a piece of copper wire. And I use a pretty heavy gauge wire. That way I don't have to think about it heating up and it gives me a place I can put my positive connection. This will be the positive circuit in this system. Now your part's going to be the negative circuit. That would be considered the cathode. And I use a steel bar to hang the part with a piece of steel wire. And then I can put my negative connection here on the steel bar. So it makes it really easy to use. So now we get to the electricity. Now, in this case, we're using a smart charger and a battery is a load because the resistance that this supplies is not enough for the smart charger to realize it should be supplying current and turn on. So we put the battery in line and then the smart charger is charging the battery and the battery is supplying the electricity for the machine. Now, I suggest going at two amps at 12 volts. And you might say to yourself, just like a guy trying to cook a Thanksgiving turkey, hmm, if I put it in the oven for four hours at 350, that means I can put it in the oven for two hours at 700. That means I can put it in the oven for one hour at 1400, if your oven will do that, or half an hour at 2800. And that's not how it works. You want to take your time. You want to go two amps. You can go an amp and a half or two amps, depending on whether or not your charger will supply that. And you'll get a much better result in the long run. And the cleanup at the end is a whole lot easier if you're running lower amperage. So let's take this outside and give it a run. So now we're going to take half a cup of washing soda and go ahead and mix it into our 10 gallons of water. Now you can mix it up with your hand. It won't hurt anything. It's just washing soda. Worst thing you'll do is clean your hand up a little bit. Once you've got it all mixed up and ready to go, we're going to go ahead and put our part in now. Now note that our part is set up in a way where it's not touching the bottom. That's important because you'll have sludge at the bottom that'll wreck your connection. So now we've got our positive on our anodes, which is our outside circuit, and our negative on our cathode, which is holding our part in the water. So now we're going to attach it to the battery. So now we're going to attach it to the battery. And make sure you don't cross these or you'll ruin your part. There you go. And there's not much to see yet. Now we're going to attach our little charger leads to our battery also. And there's our circuit. Once we plug in the charger, we're running. Note that we're running two amps at 12 volts. And if you look at this, there's really not much to see yet, but we'll give it half an hour and come back and check it again. She's been running for about half an hour now, so let's see where we are. So you can see a little bit of a line where it's cleaning it, but we're not there yet. See the bubbles coming up around the outside? That's telling you she's doing a good job. It's working. It's been about an hour now, and you can see our little hydrogen bubbles are coming up pretty strong now. So let's see where we're at. So we've gotten a lot of the surface rust is already eliminated. And if you look, 
it just wipes right off. So we've got a good start. We're going to give it another 45 minutes or so and then come back and check her again. Now, if you've been around the channel a little while, you might have seen the video that we did a little while back on using vinegar to remove rust from the inside of a gas tank. And you might say, why do I want to do this instead of using vinegar? Could I use vinegar on the entire gas tank all at once? And, well, I suppose you could, but vinegar has one drawback that this gets around. The vinegar eats up a little bit of the metal. Not much, but it, it, it's an acid, so it's going to eat up a little metal. Where this, it eats up the anodes, and it preserves your piece just like it was. So if you've got a piece of metal that has a lot of detail, but it's rusty, this is the way to go. It, you, you won't lose any of the detail at all. When, it pull, when you pull it out after a couple hours, you polish it up and you're done. Okay, she's been running for about two hours now, so we're going to go ahead and disconnect the electricity and pull the part out and see what we've got. Now, I'm sure you saw, as soon as the electricity was disconnected, the bubble stopped completely. Now, let's take this over to the bench and wipe her off and see how she looks. Now, if we had run lower amperage, this cleanup would have been a lot easier, but we were in a hurry, so we went ahead and ran high amp. But as you can see, with just a little bit of wiping, it wipes right off. And we basically used a cloth to wipe the rust off of our part, and we've lost no metal in the meantime. It kind of threw me off my game, losing my microphone in the middle of everything, but we have a new one ordered and we'll have it for the next video. Now, this came out really nice. And you can see I left it for two hours and it was two amps at 12 volts. You really don't want to go over two amps because the higher the amperage, the harder it is to clean up. It takes longer with lower amps, but it's, it's worth the wait. So this, you can see the rust where we started with and how it finished off. And we took it out of the bath and we wiped it with a cloth and that was it. So. All you new people out there, if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. It's free, and it's the reason we make these videos. So, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.